Norfolk Grumman has had a presence in Europe for a long period of time, um, and even today um, we have over well over 2,000 staff in, in 11 countries, and last year's sales were $1.3 billion to, to European customers. But it's probably fair to say that for, for the last um, 10 or 15 years or so, we haven't had as much focus on um, Europe as a, as a priority market um, for the company, and that has changed um, very significantly over the last um, three years or so with a big international initiative within Northrop Grumman and I came into the company um, a year ago very much with the mission to to grow the business and to better serve our customers um, within the, the European market. I think that Northrop Grumman has managed through some very cute um, strategies around the way it's developed its, its business um, to position itself with the sort of technologies that my own view is are going to be the technologies of the future for the customer and indeed when you look at where Northrop has focused its key capabilities in areas like unmanned systems, cyber, C4 ISR and then even onto platforms like the, the F35 where Northrop Grumman has a very large content um, particularly in the mission systems um, aspects of F35. You're seeing all the time there the sort of things the customer's talking about today and saying those are the capabilities that I need in the future and really that's the backbone of what I'm seeking to exploit within, um, within the European market. My, my view is that high altitude long endurance systems are about to have a coming of age um, you know we've we've been developing high altitude long endurance systems particularly with the global hawk family now for for a good number of years you look back over the last decade and you look at the number and the diversity of operational missions that have been flown by the United States using these high altitude long endurance systems and you see a really good example there of a system of the future um, my view is that the European market is, a, is going to be a fruitful market for those types of systems. We've already seen other customers on the other side of the world in the form of Australia, for example, looking to procure those sorts of systems for their national interests. And my belief is that there are a number of European nations who have got defence and security needs which would be very well served by a high altitude um, long endurance system. And Triton is probably the principal system within that, that family of high altitude long endurance um, aircraft that we'd be seeking to sell into the European market. Market. I mean, if I was looking across the European landscape, I would be looking for customers that have that latent requirement for a capability like that. So I think those would tend to be customers who had got um, large geographical areas with, within their own nations, and, and you know, the UK, Norway, Germany would certainly tick that, tick that box, as, as would other you know, potentially Scandinavian and Mediterranean countries. You're looking for countries who've got a, a strategic um, requirement because this is quite a strategic asset but that strategic requirement could be anything from um, defence activity in the North Atlantic or the High North right the way through to issues with border control in the Mediterranean. There's a whole range of mission scenarios that you could imagine individual countries having for which a hail asset would have, would have great utility. Um, so I think the list is potentially quite long. Um, as always with these things one would look to the priority nations. We know the German Germans have had an extant interest in, in using high altitude long endurance systems. We also think that the, the system is particularly applicable for the sort of emerging requirements we're seeing within the UK and Norway, particularly in the maritime arena.